Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be doing another appliance review video, uh, this time on the Philips Garment Iron Steamer SCE 3170-80. Now this is the um, top of the line uh, standing steamer that Philips sells in the Philippines, so it is definitely not a cheap appliance, but since we got it during the holiday sales of 2023, we have basically not touched any other ironing or steaming appliance since. So since we love it so much, I thought it would be a good idea to give you guys a little bit more information about the appliance itself, how it works, and how it compares to the um, existing appliances that we already have in case you're interested in buying this for yourself. Okay, so here we've got the machine just all set up out of the box Give you a quick overview. And I guess we'll start here because this is probably the most important part. Um, up here is the kind of steaming nozzle. This is the um, My Essence feature that they have. I've never used this to be quite honest with you, um, but you can put like essential oils and stuff in there from what I understand if you want to kind of, you know, put a nice scent on your clothes. This is plastic, everything that I'm holding, but they do have some texture here on the handle, which is quite nice. The hose part is just your typical kind of braided nylon. It is a you know decently long cord, not super long. For reference, I am about five feet tall, and this is basically my height, like for, at this part. For the face of the iron. This is actually one of the main reasons why I decided to buy this um, standing steamer because most steamers will have a plastic face and this actually I'm not sure if this is plastic or metal but it definitely heats up a little bit more. It might be ceramic um, and it is kind of you know as you can see from the shape really designed to act more like a traditional iron and help you create any um, like pants creases or pleats or anything like that, crisp lines, you know. Now moving on to the ironing board or what Philips I believe calls the style board. This is actually um, just a padded sort of cover. You know, it's not super thin, but it's definitely just a piece of padding. Um, and then a plastic body in the back. When this came, it came in two separate pieces and then we had to kind of snap it together in the middle. Here you can see it came with this type of plug, the two kind of cylinders. Um, it did come with an adapter for um, like the Philippines um, two flat prongs as well, but because the plugs in our house are that type, I didn't need to use the adapter. Here in the back, you can see that the um, style board, because one of the features that they show online is that it can tilt two different angles. Um, I thought that it would just tilt on a hinge, but actually it does not. It has one um, kind of set of pegs that you can put it on here and then one set here on the top. And you have to kind of open this um, lock, remove the board, put it back on on the next angle and then lock it again for safety. Mechanisms for adjusting the height of the whole thing um, are the same. So you basically um, open it up and then you can, you know, make it higher or lower as you wish. Down here we have the water tank. This is a two liter water tank, if I'm not mistaken, and it should be um, the largest water tank out of any of the Philips standing steamers. It comes off super easily. You basically just take it out like that. This thing at the bottom, that actually screws off and that is where you put the water in. Here on the front, you just have one set of controls. Um, the dial goes from, you know, it being turned off to steam setting one, steam setting two, and then three. I tend to almost always keep it on two. I just find that it's the most flexible. And then on the front, you have a little transparent, you know, floor stand thing and then just the Philips 3000 series mark. Before I get into the actual steaming of stuff, I wanted to show you guys how long it takes for this machine to heat up. 
It is actually not that long, um, so I'm not going to fast forward through this part so you can see it in real time. Um, so I have it plugged in, the water tank is filled up, and then now I'm going to turn it on to the level two steam setting. Let's turn it on now, and now we wait. Can you hear that? You can actually hear it kind of starting to boil, I guess. Um, and then in a little bit, the steam will start to come out. Very similar to the handheld one that we have, it actually doesn't take that long to heat up either. Although it's faster than this because I guess the water tank is smaller. Okay, there. So, can you see that? There. So some steam is starting to come out. I would not recommend that you already go in and start steaming when it's like just that kind of weak steam. But now it's, you know, now it, there's a cloud. It's pretty continuous. Um, and be careful with this. Now it does, the machine does come with this glove thing, um, which does actually really work. But because it's sort of a mitten style, um, I tend to only use it when I really need it. Since we're just on steam setting too, I'm not going to use it for now. Okay, just gonna leave that there while I get the first garment. This is the most lightweight out of all of the garments that I will be showing you. As you can see, I have pre-wrinkled these. I put them into a ball and rubber banded them last night. Can you see? Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Let's do that one. Now with lightweight fabrics like this, the main issue is getting the fabric wet or burned, I feel. So steam, I mean, if you put it on a lower setting, it should be fine. And then burning, well, the fact that you have so much steam already drastically decreases the chances of burning. Okay. Turn that off for a little bit just so you can I'm not doing the entire garment for any of these. I'm just trying to show you, you know, hopefully you can see right there the curve of where I did steam it and where I did not. So here towards the bottom is a lot more flat. Here at the top still very crinkled. You can also do this with a hanger if the clothes don't wear very well onto the style board, like if they don't fit that well. So if you saw I turned it off um, in between the steamings because I don't want it to just steam my wallpaper off, but hopefully you can see. So this top part is what looked creased still a while ago. I wasn't able to get that when I wore it onto the style board. But here, just a couple of passes. I hope you can see that. Basically, no more wrinkles. It's very smooth, but it does have, like right there, a splotch of steam because it is such a lightweight fabric. Give you a comparison again. Wrinkled. Steamed. Steamed. Wrinkled. <laughs> okay. So here I have got a white shirt. This time, a medium weight cotton white shirt, similar to what I used in the previous video. 
I hope you can see it is pretty wrinkled. So I'll do this specific part since that is what you can see. That is the bottom left of the shirt. I'm putting it to steam setting number two again. And you have to wait for it a little bit if you turn it off. It'll make the boiling sound right away, but you just want to wait until the steam flow is continuous. Okay. Sorry, I'm going a bit out of frame for this, but you, you get the idea. Uh, I guess the only thing here is if you have a bad back, I don't know if you're going to like having to bend down to turn off the machine so much. But if you can see, uh, the shirt is very smooth on this side versus this part where it still has its wrinkles. Now for this one, because it is a very difficult to iron fabric, I am going to put the seam to setting number three. Yeah. Okay, so on setting number three, I would recommend definitely that you use the silver glove that they have. Um, and what I'd like to do uh, if I'm too lazy to put a glove on is I make sure to point the head, kind of tilt it away from my hand that's holding, you know, the piece of clothing. And I feel like that really, like the steam can still burn you, like in terms of like its heat, but at least the, the nozzle is directing the steam away. Okay, let me try to get that in frame. Getting all this. Ooh. Okay. Um, don't know if you saw that, but like, so I put my hand down for a little while and it kind of bent the hose. That is something you need to be careful with um, if you're using this and you're kind of a short person like me. Um, there are times where if you get the hose bent in um, a certain way and it kind of traps the steam in there, it can just like, you know, it traps the steam in there and then it just spews out at you, you know? I did half. This is the half that I did. And this is the half. Oh, there. This is the half that I did. This is the half I did not. There's one big crease that I can't seem to get out, even on the third steam setting. So keep in mind, this machine is not magic. It's not going to be able to take all wrinkles out immediately. Now I'll do this part as well, just to show you one more time, because on linen, I feel like it's not the easiest to tell sometimes. Hopefully you can see those wrinkles. If you want to make it higher, you can always do that to the hanger. Hopefully, when you see that, you, know, you can really see where it's like more relaxed and steamed versus the bottom, which is obviously a lot more wrinkled. Here now we have um, denim, a cotton denim dress. Here is, are the wrinkles very clearly have on both sides have them on both sides okay there, just a little bit higher for you guys try this first on two and then see if we need to bump it up to three because the thing with three is it is very powerful steam but also it can tend to get your fabric more wet and that whole kind of hose bending thing does happen more when you have more steam coming out so it's nice to have but i don't really use it super often
Okay, so it's pretty flat now, but there is like a shadow of a crease. So let me just turn it to three and see if we can get that out. Sometimes I like to hold the garment away from the board so that the steam can really pass through it and then try to press it to flatten it out. Here, I think this is a great example. Don't mind that little water spot from when I put it on the three setting. But look at that. In just a few seconds, you've got that versus that. Last but not least, we have a pair of tailored shorts. Now for this one, I did wrinkle it. The creases aren't super wonky, but I'll show you later. I, I'll extend that crease just to show you how the fabric holds. But there, this is the side that I'm going to be testing on. And I'll leave that other side as is. Starting with setting number two for the ironing part. Or sorry, for the steaming part. Oops. I don't know if I can say it enough, the steam can really burn you. Uh, and if you are afraid of that, or if you're not used to this machine, please don't be like me, don't be lazy, just go get the glove. But of course, I'm going to continue to be lazy. Okay. So first, let me show you this. Um, the garment that has been just steamed. So there, pretty relaxed, versus the side that I did not steam. Lots of wrinkles. Remember, they started out the same. And then now I'm going to really extend this crease. I'll take the pleat all the way down, even though that's not how these shorts are really supposed to be. But. Did one slow pass on setting number two. And look at that. Super crisp, super clean. And it's obviously different from the crease on this side, so you know that the machine really did something. Okay, so now that you have seen the Philips STE3170 in action, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the other Philips steaming and ironing appliances that we had before that one and sort of how they compare in case you were looking for a more affordable or maybe a more compact option. This is the first one that I'll talk about. This is the Philips uh, STH3010. This is a handheld travel steamer that Philips sells. Um, and I have a full review video on this that I will link up above and also down in the info box below. But the gist of it is that we do like it. It is more compact than this standing steamer. It is also much less expensive at I think around 2000 or so. Uh, but the big thing to note is that this is less powerful. Now, uh, this one releases 20 grams of steam per minute, according to my online research, but the standing one releases 40 grams of steam per minute at the maximum setting. So a lot more power than this smaller one. Understandable, obviously, given that that is a standing full-size steamer and this one is just meant to be a travel steamer. The other main difference here is that the water tank is much smaller on this one. So if you can see right there, this water tank is about one cup 
Obviously, if you're doing a few garments or maybe you don't have a lot of stuff that needs to be steamed, you know, you might just want to go for the travel version. Um, it does still work quite well for what it is. You're just not going to have, you know, as much steaming power if you need it, depending on what fabrics and what kind of stuff you're trying to steam. And then you don't have the option to kind of like press a crease into the clothes. Um, unlike the other one, which does have, you know, that board where you can kind of press things against. Of course, still, price difference is huge, so if you just want to try out using a steamer, see if you like it, I would really recommend that one. Now this one is actually the first ever ironing slash steaming product that I ever got from Philips. This is the uh, Philips Easy Speed Plus. I actually don't think that they make this anymore, but they do still sell something similar. They just call it something different. Um, but this one, as you can see, is a much more traditional kind of like iron that you use with an ironing board, but it has a steam function on it. The steam function on this, in my opinion, is very good. Um, I haven't really had any issues with it apart from sometimes when you kind of like do the um, turn it on for the first time in a long time, you can get a little bit of buildup, like calcium buildup in the holes, but they do have a kind of like steam wait they have this kind of like steam shot button that I basically use to just kind of like um, push out any buildup that's in the holes and that's worked really well for me I don't really have a problem with you know getting that buildup onto the clothes that I'm trying to iron or steam and then if I you know let's say I'm doing like a pair of pants and I'm really ironing like the the leg length of the legs of the pants but I'm having a hard time getting around all of the belt loops and the zippers and the pockets and all of that I will actually just put it on one of the stronger continuous steam modes and then I'll like I'll hover it over the clothes so it's basically kind of like a steam iron or like a steamer anyway like one of these the only difference is that you're horizontal instead of vertical. Now, obviously that's going to be very, very tiring hovering this heavy thing over the fabric if you are mostly trying to steam. But I guess my point is that this also has some flexibility in it. It's just that it's best for situations where you have a lot more kind of like f really flat, um, crisp ironing needs versus ironing around difficult to get into spaces, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I would 100% still recommend any of these Philips items. Um, I do think it just kind of depends on you. Like, as I'm telling you all these things, I'm sure you have, um, kind of leaned towards one item or the other. Um, if you are specifically looking at, you know, standing steamers and you're sure that you want to get one, I really like the Philips STE 3170. Um, I know that they sell cheaper ones, the ones that don't have kind of like the hard style board and I think they don't have the point at the top of the steamer head, they don't have the um, what seems like a ceramic plate on the front, it's just plastic, but I would not really recommend those, not because I've tried them and didn't like them or anything like that, but because when I was doing research on which steamer, standing steamer to buy, I did see some reviews online that said that the lower end standing steamers from Philips were not very good quality when they received theirs. I know that there are also a bunch of kind of generic brand Shopee Lazada um, standing steamer options. Actually, some of those were really enticing because they're very cheap. Some of them can be under 2,000 pesos and the they do come with a style board sort of thing and it tilts from vertical to completely horizontal, which I thought was ingenious. Uh, but when I looked at the pictures, um, the steamer head, like the plate, the front of where the steam comes out, it had two screws, like right there and right there. And I'm like, if you have an ironing board, why why would you put screws on the front of the thing that you're supposed to iron with, right? Because um, you're basically either not going to be able to use it that way or you're going to damage your clothes. All in all, very happy with the Philips standing steamer that we got. Also very happy still with the past Philips appliances that we've had. Um, in case anyone is wondering, this is definitely not sponsored. Philips has no idea I exist. Um, I just really like their products and have had good experiences with them in the past. So that is it for today's video. Uh, I hope you found 
found it helpful. Uh, and if you want to see more videos like this, then I hope you will subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.